Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to FTB Interactions. So since last episode I have been fairly busy, not as much building uh, between episodes because I have been doing a lot of work uh, with machines <clears throat> and prepping for this episode because we're about to start a big um, string of automation, let's say. Of course we will still take time to do you know a little bit of magic and try to keep Got to try to keep that up and work towards some stuff that we're going to be, you know, that we're aiming for. But um, I did spend a while prepping up some stuff. I also did a little bit of mining. I did get some silver and some lead. Uh, that was the main thing that I mined up. Um, over here, I added in uh, caches for sulfur. Uh, this is coal dust. That's lignite coal. That's thorium. Uh, this right here, this is stibnite and antimony, uh, which I got from processing stibnite ore. Um, processing that down and then over here I moved our blast furnace um, over and um, I've got this plugged up and basically it uh, there's an insert on the cyan line that is set to insert aluminum dust so any aluminum dust that our system processes automatically gets sent here and then it extracts um, on the black line and uh, it will extract like if I come over here and I make like say red alloy or something it will automatically of course extract that as well and pump it over here so I can just throw a bunch of you know destabilized redstone and copper in here walk away come back um, and it'll be in the cache where it belongs instead of being inside of this um, so I did go ahead and plug that up because we've got a lot to cover and I didn't want to waste any time um, on camera doing that I also moved the tank um, it's a little bit smaller than it was but that's actually not a, not an issue um, this tank basically just feeds this ore processing area, so it really doesn't have to be that big. Um, even though, actually, this whole line of cables, I changed my mind on this, this is actually going to get pulled up um, in exchange for something that's a little bit cheaper on cables for us that we're going to be getting into this episode. So, um, but yeah, a lot, of, a lot of reorganizing and moving things around. Um, over here, right now, the steam is ran underground. Um, with these advanced mechanical pipes, I made a bunch of these, and I actually just made 16 more. Uh, but I'm actually going to be able to pull up most of those <laughs> here in just a minute, so we'll have a lot of spares. Um, and then it's getting pumped over. These aren't plugged up at the moment, of course. Um, but it's getting pumped over to steam turbines. Right now, the only thing over here is our chemical reactor, because we're going to be using this today. Well, maybe today. We'll see how far we get because we have a little bit of work to do before we actually start getting into automating things. And that's because I want to work up to something before we start into that. Um, and then over here, there's a memory chest that's set up. And this is set up on a white line. And basically what I did is I went through and gave everything an extraction. All these caches can extract on the white channel. Um, you know, they're inserting on the cyan. And then over here, it's like the black line I think yeah black line but everything can extract on the white channel uh, through the item ducts now once we start AE2 you know we'll have uh, buses attached to each of these but these can extract on the white line which will feed to various setups across the base um, in addition to the AE stuff but over here I've got a memory chest that's set up and right now I've just got redstone rare earth sulfur cinnabar stone dust iron aluminum nickel tin copper gold steel and bronze being fed into this but I'm sure that I know for a fact that we're gonna add things I know we're gonna add coal dust and stuff to this um, <clears throat> which we'll get into it later but anyways that we're gonna we're gonna be using here soon so and where I spend a lot of my time and hopefully after the next couple episodes we won't have to spend so much time prepping this stuff up but I have prepped up a lot of stuff down through here a lot of stuff um, and we're gonna start getting into that I don't know if we'll use all of this today but we're gonna use a bit of this today so first and foremost what we are going to do is we are going to aim for um, the pyrolease oven now we're not gonna be using this for automatic charcoal and all that right now or creosote um, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be producing a liquid and I'm actually not gonna set it up right now for full automation Later on, we will set it up for full automation. But for now, we're just going to be using it for a very certain, a very specific byproduct that we can get from this. Now, right in here, I've actually got a few things prepped up. I got an LV input bus, an LV output bus, an LV output hatch, LV input hatch. 
that's for fluid and items of course and then we have an MV energy input hatch and then 12 ULV machine casings um, also really really quick speaking of um, this over here um, this is for fluids but I upgrade this to an MV energy input hatch and I just have an advanced steam turbine right there uh, producing power and feeding it into the MV hatch so now we don't have the four turbines we just have the one single turbine that powers our blast furnace um, but okay so we've got all that stuff and then we also have uh, copper nickel wires right here and let's go ahead and craft these together we're gonna get our copper nickel coil blocks just like we did for the blast furnace and then right over here I have a pyrolease oven prepped up which is copper nickel wires um, electric pump which is like that it's just bronze a lot of bronze uh, rubber rings and medium steel pipes uh, MV machine hall good electronic circuits and the electronic pistons which actually we have um, in this we've done everything now except for the 40 electric motors so um, which I'm not gonna worry about crafting all of these up right now that's because it's about to get a whole lot easier once we get all this stuff set up that we're about to be doing so um, but anyways, there is our Pyrolease Oven, and we get a quest complete, and this is actually very, very key. Uh, right here is the quest for the Pyrolease Oven, and you can see we get a program circuit, 16 steel plates, which actually, now I've got 38 in there. Uh, program circuit, which I'm just going to dump in there, and we get a shifting star. And this is actually important because right here, I've got something laid out. We're going to use the shifting star to make a fluid transfer node. Um, so let's go ahead and grab that and we're not going to be moving the tree farm today probably next episode I may actually just do that off camera and then we'll cover the nodes on camera because we're going to use nodes to transfer the blocks um, and get all this stuff cleaned up and then we'll get the grass changed over and stuff so uh, this bottom floor is in a reorganizing stage but this should be the last time because these machines are going to get moved over to there or a vast majority of them are and that'll be like the last time they get moved um, the blast furnace that was the last time it'll get moved probably um, at least that one we're going to set up a bunch more of those and then once this tree farms moved for the third time it'll be the permanent place so anyways what we're going to do is we're going to set up our pyrolease oven now if we look right here this is what the multi-block looks like is like that and we've got our output hatches and output buses on the back side of course I think we could put those in the front side but I'm actually gonna leave them um, I think on the back side and what we're going to do is we're actually gonna set this up right in here and so we're gonna do our ULV machine casings like right there and then right there so this will be where the pyrolease oven sits and then we'll have um, the energy hatch setting we're actually going to set it up pretty much identical to how they have it in the picture um, that's because it's convenient and we're going to have our fluid output there we're going to have our um, fluid input here which I'm actually not going to be using this today for what we're going to be doing the fluid input but we will use that later so um, the Pyrolease oven, basically what it does is it can create charcoal at an extremely fast rate. And you can get byproduct liquids, not just creosote. There's some other liquids that you can make from it. Um, but creosote is one of them. It's basically just a super fast, um, you know, Coke oven. Except I don't think you can make cold Coke in it. Um, I think it's just for making charcoal, right? Yeah. You know, I don't think you're going to be able to make uh, cold Coke from that. Um, I'm actually going to leave this system because I'm happy with it and it works very, very well. Um, the Pyrolease oven is going to take a little bit of power input to run. That's not really an issue, but honestly, this little system over here is, is fine. You know, it's kicking away perfectly and it doesn't really take any kind of input. So, and last thing we have to do is just put our copper nickel blocks like this. And, oh, I should have checked to see. I think this is all in the same. Yeah, it's all in the same chunk. That's something you kind of want to make sure of. Um, personally, I've never had any issue with building multi-blocks across multiple chunks, but basically if there's a chunk loading issue, um, it can cause issues with your stuff. So, um, Okay, so if we take a look here, 
Um, it says power release oven. There we go. Max AU per tick is 256 MV and it is idling. So let's say the MV energy hatch. Yeah, it's 128, but it does two amperage. So that's what that's for. But we're actually only going to be feeding in one amperage at the moment. And I've actually got a couple advanced steam turbines right here. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm actually just going to plug this directly in to this. Okay, so the turbine goes right there. And then what we're going to do, our fluid transfer node. This thing is, these things are wonderful. And we're going to be using these a lot because here very, very soon, we're actually going to be getting a, into this tab a lot. This is a lot of our fluids. And we're going to be setting up dedicated tanks. We're actually going to be getting into a couple fluids today. Um, actually, a few fluids. But we're not going to go all out with them just yet until I get more tanks made, which I have been working on prepping up a lot of stuff for tanks. I mean, you can see there's structural glass, there's reinforced glass. And then actually in here, there's some dynamic tank stuff. Um, that I've been getting together. That's something that we're about to start tackling full throttle and doing a full fluid area, you know, with tanks and everything, or multiple areas probably. But um, but for right now, we're just focusing on the key parts. So right now, um, we're going to be messing with steam. So let's go ahead and get ourselves some GPS markers. And that is uh, light blue. Yeah, I actually think I have some light blue. Well, I've got one, but I've actually got, uh, right over here in my squeezer, uh, I've got this blue orchid. I don't use this thing very much, but it's uh, it's still the best for using the blue orchids because you get four output instead of just two, like from the extractor. So I've been using um, the squeezer for that. But let's go ahead. Um, it's what? Paper, light blue dye, and sticks, and I've got uh, nine light blue dye. And I won't need nine right this second, but we will over time. We'll need a bunch of these. So uh, this is basically the best thing ever um, at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up our fluid transfer node. Now you have to pump into this. You know, I couldn't just put it on top of, um, well, actually I could put it, uh, I couldn't put it on something, you know, that's not automatically outputting. So it does need to output. But we're just actually going to put it right here. Right there is going to be our fluid transfer node. And you can set your transfer right. We're going to go ahead and just set this to max. Because uh, why not, right? And I don't really know. What's this? Okay. Well, anyways. Oh, it's because we overfilled it somehow. I don't really know how that worked out. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to take our GPS marker. And this thing doesn't require any kind of power or anything like that. We're just going to come over here and we're just going to shift right click our advanced steam turbine. And then we're going to come back over here and take this and drop it into there and detect. And then if we come over, if we come back over here, we should see that this has steam and this has produced power. Okay. If we look up here, um, well, actually, let me just uh, let me pull off this real quick. You can see that we've got power in the energy input hatch. So there we go. And the nice thing is it saves the location and not the block. So if you pull up your advanced steam turbine, maybe on accident, or you're upgrading turbines or something like that, you can just pull it up and then you can replace the block, and it's still going to be connected to that wireless fluid transfer. So these things actually are not very expensive. It's kind of funny because like Ender tanks, for example, are super expensive. I mean, they're very light gain. They take resonant Ender. You need uh, 1,920 EU per tick. Well, not very light gain, but they're pretty light, pretty back end of the pack. I'd say titanium screws, void metal plates, um, maybe like mid to light game ish Not quite in game, not really light game, but mid to late game. But these fluid transfer nodes, not very expensive. The shifting stars are actually not even expensive to craft either. Um, we've done, you know, pretty much all that stuff. So we could easily craft all of this stuff um, without too much issue. So, um, and then another thing I want to do is right over here, um, instead of having 
all of this line because this is actually a lot of mechanical pipes that are ran through here like if we pop down through here I mean it's a huge string that comes across and then it plugs in there for right now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna disconnect all of these so we'll just go ahead and break all of that it's actually so long it didn't break all of them yeah so now I've got 55 advanced mechanical pipes which um, I did have to craft some of the enriched alloy, but honestly, we're at the point where that's not all that bad to make. Graphite, of course, we've got destabilized redstone. Soldering alloy is just um, the antimony. That's why I was running that, and then tin uh, to make that. But um, I actually had some soldering alloy, though, from a quest, so I didn't actually have to make any of it, but I was preparing to make some of it and then didn't have to. So, um, Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to take our GPS marker and I'm not 100% sure if this will work. I think it will. We're going to try it. If it doesn't work, no harm, no foul, uh, but we'll see. So if we take this and we just shift right click there, because it should be able to see that pipe as an inventory and pump steam directly into the pipe. So let's go ahead and we'll just drop that into there, detect, and is it working? No, it's not working. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I'm guessing probably the reason this is so much cheaper than the Ender Tank is because um, I guess it's a 1,000 millibucket per tick transfer rate, so maybe that's why. But it's a it's 1,000 millibuckets per per connection though. So so we'll just connect it to there then. And I know this will work. So then we'll just drop that. So there, detect, and then you can see this is already filled up with steam just in the time it took me to get over here. So then we'll say extract, and there we go. Everything's plugged back up, and it takes a whole lot less cableage than it did. So, um, which I don't mind making all those advanced mechanical pipes because I, I was making them, and then right after I made that last little batch of 16, I was like, wait a second. I don't need all these pipes because this thing is so much cheaper than I expected so all right so we'll just plug that up and there we go those steam turbines are plugged up okay so now that that's done um, our power release oven is ready to go and if we take a look actually I need to go get that program circuit that they gave us from the quest and what we're going to do like I said I'm not going to automatically feed items in right now we will later on um, but if we take a look at the power release oven what we can make is, you know, there's only six pages of recipes, but we can make creosote with this, 4,000 millibuckets for 16 wood and you get 20 charcoal. Um, we can make, well, there's creosote with nitrogen, which if you use nitrogen, it costs a little bit more EU per tick, but it's less EU overall and it's a, lot, it's a bit faster. Um, but we're not interested in that. We can also make heavy oil and ashes. We can make wood vinegar uh, with charcoal. We can make... Um, wood gas which is actually what we're going to be making there's also wood tar and there's charcoal byproducts which this does to make charcoal byproducts you do have to have nitrogen for that um, and then we can also make charcoal dust with water um, but that's with sugar so um, but what we're going to be making is just wood gas and we're going to be going with this method right here it takes 32 seconds to process it um, compared to 16 seconds with nitrogen input and we need a configuration five program circuit. So let's go ahead and set this thing to five. And we're gonna put this into our input bus. And then we're gonna grab ourselves a stack of mineral. And we're just gonna throw that into there and it's gonna start running. Okay, you can see it doesn't consume the circuit just like normal. Um, but it's going to start running and it's going to produce some charcoal and it's going to produce some wood gas. Now, of course, charcoal, I don't really have any use for that. But it doesn't hurt to have that charcoal. Um, it's just kind of, you know, something to have sitting around because I don't really pull charcoal out of the system. And occasionally I'll use charcoal, um, but it's not very common. You know, there's a few recipes that have come up where I need charcoal dust or whatever. Well, actually, now we've got coal coke, so I don't even know if we'll use it for that. I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, you can see we made 20 charcoal and we have uh, 1,500 wood gas. Okay, 
So now we're producing some wood gas and we don't actually need a whole lot of this right now, but we do need a little bit of it. Now, the next thing I want to do, if we look at wood gas and we look at the uses for this, now there is the distillation tower, but that's 256 AU per tick. We're not going to get into that right this second. There's also the gas turbine. Um, so we can produce, you know, gas based power. We're actually going to be moving into some alternative powers um, here before too long, but not right this second. Um, what we're going to be looking at is the distillery. So we can take wood gas and we can make carbon dioxide, we can make methane, carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and ethylene. Okay, And ethylene is 1,000 millibuckets of wood gas for 200 millibuckets of ethylene. Um, and you can see it's 64 EU per tick. So we would have to have um, at least an advanced distillery. But luckily there we go. There's an advanced distillery laid out. Um, it's just good electronic circuits, blaze rods, so you have to have been to the nether, um, copper cables and electric pumps, um, which these, I already showed you those. So there we go. There's that. And I don't know, there's a quest for a distillery, I think. Oh, it's the basic distillery right here. Well, we're not doing that right now. <laughs> All right. So there's that. And, um, Go ahead and take that. I also need a program circuit. So the program circuit is just a circuit. Okay. And let's see, for right now, we're going to put this right here, I guess. Because all this is about to get moved anyway. So there we go. It's got power. I mean, I've got another advanced steam turbine there, but eh. <laughs> that'll be fine. And then. Um, this has stopped running, so let me grab another stack of mineral, toss that into there and get that running. If you take a look, we've got charcoal and we've got wood gas. Let's go ahead and grab our wood gas out of there. I want all of that. Oh, wait. There we go. We'll put it inside of a, put it inside of a backpack because it'll make us float, make us float away. Okay, so if we take a look at the wood gas one, one last time here, um, in the distillery, we're going to need configuration one on this. So let's go ahead and do that. And there is quests for some of this stuff. Some of them we will be unlocking today. Some of them we won't quite be unlocking today because some of the, um, the fluids are, we're kind of skipping some of these, you know, because there's the distillery and like there's the fluid transfer node and stuff. But, uh, it's no biggie if we skip that for right now. Let's go ahead and just dump that into there. And we'll get that running. I should probably grab my mitts, but that's fine. And we're going to produce ethylene. Now, what we want ethylene for, uh, if we take a look, it's a little bit of a processing line here. If we run this through a chemical reactor with a program circuit zero, the ethylene and oxygen, we're going to get polyethylene. And that's what we're after. So I've got a uh, chemical reactor over there, and this is the one that has oxygen. So let's go ahead and just grab that out. Oh no. I guess I should go get my mints. So this will stop happening. I'm not sure if they're gonna take, well, actually I think they'll get repaired, so it's no biggie. Just gotta figure out where I put them, because I wasn't using them. Now we should be able to carry this stuff and it not cause us to float. I'm not sure if they're going to get repaired by our repair talisman or not. They're taking durability damage. Oops. We're going to put the oxygen in right there. Okay, and this stuff is done. Let's go ahead and grab that. Yeah, this one's too light to handle as well, the ethylene is. And we're just going to throw this right into there. And then what we're going to do, which we will need more of this stuff because we, well, we're going to be making, actually, we need quite a bit of it. But uh, we're going to need a program circuit. If I recall, it was just uh, configuration zero, I think. Yeah, just configuration zero. So we're going to throw that into there and it's going to start running and it's going to produce liquid ethylene. Now, I'm not sure if this is like too light to handle or not. I mean, not liquid ethylene, polyethylene. So that, okay, no, this doesn't do anything to us if we hold it, which is great. But we'll have to clean this out here soon enough. 
Um, cause I'm actually going to need this spice, this chemical reactor, but that's fine. I'm just going to bring some drums up here and put that stuff into drums. Um, but okay. So we've got our polyethylene. We've got nearly two buckets of polyethylene, which should be good for what we need it for, uh, for now. And what we're going to need it for, I'm going to need an advanced assembling machine, which there we go. Uh, this thing requires MV robot arms, which is like that, which take the electric pistons and the electric motors. You can see where this stuff took a while to prep. Uh, then we need conveyor modules, which are pretty easy. So these are actually fairly cheap. Um, honestly, the robot arms are just, it's mainly the circuits that are a pain at the moment. So, which that's going to be fixed soon enough. That's what we're working up to. So there's our advanced assembling machine. Now right over here, I've actually got five basic assembly, assembling machines laid out. So that's what that is. We're going to get into that soon. Um, assembling machine age of Ultron. We get 16 wafers for that. All right, so let's take our advanced assembling machine. And I guess for right now, I'm just going to move this thing. And we'll just set the distillery right over there for right now. We'll put, come back, we'll put that right there. Okay. And what we're going to, going to be making, let's go ahead and dump our liquid into there, our polyethylene. And this is where it's going to get fun. If we take a look at Super, we're going to be starting to get into Super Factory Manager, which is basically, if you ever play around with Steve's Factory Manager, which if you haven't, it's a wonderful mod and you, you need to play with it. Um, but basically Super Factory Manager is a port of that with names changed and all that. But it's it's the same exact, um, you know, it's the same exact thing at its core. So if we take a look at the Machine Inventory Manager, this is basically the controller for your setup. You can see that we need uh, 48 EU per tick. We need 288 millibuckets of poly polyethylene. We need an MV machine hull, a compressed crafting table, which is just nine crafting tables, and then we need an MV sensor, uh, which takes electrum, which is why I farmed up silver <laughs> uh, between episodes. So we'll go ahead and throw this into the alloy smelter, get that running, making us some, elec uh, some electrum, which I will slot that into a cache whenever I make more caches. So there's that, and then we'll just throw this into the lathe, get that going. And then the rest of this, four aluminum plates, nether quartz, which I do need to process more aluminum um, here fairly soon because I'm starting to get, oops, I'm starting to get a little bit low on that, which this chest isn't really meant to have things taken out of it, as you can tell. It's not going to be something that we do very often. So once this is all in place. Okay, so there's our sensor. Easy enough. And then, um, let's see, crafting tables. So we'll go ahead and run those through the compressor. And then I've got all the rest of this stuff. And there we go, compressed crafting table. Throw that into there and that's gonna start running. It's gonna take a minute. You can see it takes 40 seconds to craft this thing. Now in addition to the machine inventory manager, there's one other thing from this mod that we're gonna need and that's it. And this thing can do all of our stuff and that's the inventory cables. And we're actually gonna want um, a few of these, I'm probably going to go ahead and start with, uh, let's see, red alloy cables, gold plates. Ooh, I need to get the rubber automated, which we're going to be doing that. This is, I don't have any more rubber in there. I used all of it. Okay, cool. Because we're going to be automating rubber um, probably today if we get to it. Um, and we're going to be doing it a little bit differently than how we had been doing it. So we're not going to be using that raw rubber pulp anymore. So go ahead and throw this into there and get that running. You can see it doesn't matter if the oxygen and ethylene's in there. That's fine. Um, we can still make the rubber because that goes into output. Um, but there's our machine inventory manager. Let's go ahead and take that. Yay. I think I'm going to go ahead and go with four crafts of this, um, which will give us a half stack of inventory cables. We will need more of these as time goes on. Um, but that's gonna be a good starting point. So we're gonna need a half stack of gold plates. Um, I'll be back here in a second once I get the red cables made up. Oh, but that's 1,152 polyethylene. 
uh, per eight and I've only got enough for one craft so I'm gonna have to make some more of that as well all right so I'll be back here in just a little bit okay our 32 inventory cables are done we have 504 polyethylene in there and then I've got a little bit more left over I'll probably make some more inventory cables yeah I've got almost enough actually I think I've got enough for two crafts so I'll make some more of these but I want to go farm up aluminum because I've only got 10 to my name at the moment and uh well it's not really go out and farm I basically just have to set it up so I can run sapphire dust through this and that'll fix that but um so anyways what we're going to do we're not going to start setting up super factory manager this episode I don't think because there's a couple of the things that we need for this setup and I don't want to have to stop in the middle and I want to kind of dedicate an episode to Super Factory Manager but we're gonna go ahead and set this stuff up uh, like the placement and so what we're going in that way I can see how many more inventory cables I'm gonna need as well but what we're gonna do is we're gonna run inventory cables like this because we're gonna have machines through there and we're also gonna machines along the top so we'll run another layer of inventory cables on top of that um, and then I'll probably have machines down along through here as well. So what I'll do is, now I know I'll have machines right here, and then that'll connect right there, because this is all gonna get covered. It's gonna have covers in front of it. So you won't be able to see the inventory cables long term. Um, but what we need to do is we need to run inventory cables basically to where this memory chest is. And so we'll put inventory cable there, yeah, we'll actually run this up underneath the floor like this, uh, in fact. So let me pop back up out of here. There we go, and that's all connected. And then, actually right in here, because I think what we're going to do is we're going to have this be, yeah, for right now we're going to have this be something uh, that we're going to be setting up here in a minute. So we'll bring our inventory cable up to there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up our machine inventory manager and we're going to have this setting like right here because I want it to be accessible. Um, so what we'll do is we'll have covers over this, but we'll have this still be accessible uh, somehow. So if you take a look here, this is this is Super Factory Manager. Uh, if you ever, like I said, if you ever use Steve's Factory Manager, it's identical. It looks the same. It's the same exact process you know, uh, for setting this up. Now there's two different ways uh, with what we're gonna be doing, which like I said, we're not gonna be getting into the setup today. And that's because we won't have time to finish it in today's episode and I don't wanna stop in the middle of it. I'd rather just spend a whole episode dedicated to Super Factory Manager uh, in the next episode. But there's a couple, there's actually another way that you can do what we're going to be doing, and that is thermal logistics. Thermal logistics, I did test it, works fine for what we're going to be doing. But the thing about doing thermal logistics is it actually ends up being a whole lot more expensive. Um, because it's, I guess thermal logistics is probably easier if you've never used Steve's Factory Managers. Thermal logistics is kind of easier to figure out because it's very, very straightforward and very self-explanatory. But for what I would want to do, I'd need crafters and I would have to tear these things up and it's just way more expensive. It's it's actually super expensive to do a lot uh, with thermal logistics when you can do the same thing with uh, Super Factory Manager. Super Factory Manager is actually a very simple mod once you understand it. Learning it, if you, it, it's actually very overwhelming, I think, if you've never used it before. But hopefully um, in the next episode I can explain it in a way um, and show you guys and, and kind of do a lot of it on camera just making up setups with it so that if you have any questions um, hopefully it'll answer it for you and you know if you want ideas for setups that you can do with it because it's really you can do so much with it um, as long as you are willing to dedicate the time to doing a setup with it because it's actually it's actually very very powerful and very very simple uh, to use. Now a couple of the things that we're going to need for this. First up, I want to make, it's it's high time that we make a modular storage because these things are very very powerful. Now for this we're going to need nether quartz plates um, which, okay we make that with the block of quartz which I actually think I've got some steel chests 
Yeah, I've got one right here. I've actually got a couple right there, but I actually only need one modular storage at the moment. And give me just a second while I get this stuff together, and um, I'll be right back. This won't take very long. I've got to make some more red alloy cable. Or no, I don't. I've got some right there. But I think you guys are going to like what we're going to be setting up next episode. Um, but like I said, it, it's going to be the entire episode for the most part. Um, chances are. So, um, I mean, it will involve setting up some machines and doing some some automation work. And I will say that I'm going to get the, between episodes, I'm going to get the tree farm moved out of the base to where it's actually going to go long term. And so we will briefly cover nodes next episode and how those work. Um, so if you have any questions about that, uh, we'll get that covered next episode as well. So, but that'll be the main focus. Um, and then we'll, the episode after that, we'll get into magic. I just don't want to stop because what we're going to be setting up is going to be such a huge, huge quality of life thing that's really game changing for this point. Because MV stuff, we're getting to where it's actually very, like what I prepped up for this episode took what felt like forever. And <laughs> it's time that we automate that. It's time that we get it automated. Because once we get all that stuff automated, we can pretty much just expand um, freely at just the cost of resources is all. It's not a, it's not going to be a huge time sink to make a lot of machines and make a lot of things and expand um, once we get that stuff set up. It's basically going to be like having AE2 auto crafting before AE2 auto crafting. So, all right. So there's our modular storage task completed, and then I'm assuming that that is over here. Yeah, and then they want us to make a tier one storage module and we get a tier one storage module as a reward okay well that's fine so to make the uh, we're actually going to go ahead and shoot straight for tier three storage because getting just a tier one not so much worth it um, now i am going to need an iron to gold chest upgrade and then we're just going to need a basic circuit now for the tier two, we're gonna need enriched alloy. And then for the tier three, we need reinforced alloy, which takes diamond dust. Um, and we're gonna need run, and we're gonna have to run it through a advanced assembler, right? Um, so what we're going to do, I need to make a couple bits of enriched alloy. Okay, so we use the tin and the antimony, and that's gonna make our soldering alloy. And let me pop over here, let me get some redstone as well. Throw that in the fluid extractor, and then um, we're going to actually set up a proper macerator uh, here soon. So there we go, or like one that's actually for manual use. <laughs> and there's that. Okay, so two of those, that, and we can get our enriched alloy. Okay, and there's our enriched alloy. So... Let's go ahead and <clears throat> that and that. We'll get that running. It's going to make our storage upgrade. And then that and that. And that's 16. That's 16. Okay, so we just need the reinforced alloy now, uh, which is going to take our diamond dust. So let me pop over. Going to have to get a diamond and crush it up. Which, by the way, this ore processing system, you know, it felt like it was slow when I first set it up, but it's actually fairly quick. Um, it's pretty good. But, uh, or whoops. Let me grab that. Okay. So that and that. We'll get that running, and let me pull out the rest of this rubber out of there. And that's going to take a little while, it looks like. So, um, oh, I didn't complete the quest. That's fine. I'll make more of these. So, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, there's no way to break it back down. <laughs> Whoops. But I'll be making, I'll actually probably, maybe even between episodes, I might make another one of these. And that's so that I can store a lot of that miscellaneous stuff that we've got sitting around. Um, but for now, I just need one. Um, for what we're actually going to be working on uh, during the next episode. And actually, let's go ahead and take our modular storage. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this up right here. 
There we go. Storing the stuff advancement. And what we're going to do is our crafting stations. Let's start pulling these up. Because this little area is about to be gone. Because we're going to replace it with our modular storage area set up. And we're going to have this set up so that it automatically keeps things crafted and stocked uh, for all of our crafting needs. So it's going to be wonderful, I promise. <laughs> Once it's all set up, it's going to be great. Because we're going to have just like a crafting hub where we just, everything is really, really quick to craft. So anyways, we'll get that running and it's going to make our tier three storage module for us. And there we go. So we can store 300 different items in here. And you can see we can save recipes to this as well. Um, up to six recipes. And we can click here to craft one, craft four, craft eight, craft a stack, which is great. And then we're going to have these crafting stations to make other things. And, you know, I'll probably use the crafting stations like I do now where I can lay out recipes and keep them prepped up for the episodes because I feel like it kind of streamlines things a little bit better for us. But then we can have this with some saved recipes and then our automation set up. And so crafting stuff and getting into more advanced machines and more quantity of machines is going to be a whole lot easier. It's going to be, especially with what we're going to be working on next episode. So, um, and then the last thing I want to set up this episode right here, I've got an arboreal extractor. Let's go ahead and grab that. And we completed a quest for sticky business, which is, uh, I think it's in uh, this one. Yeah, right here. And they want us to get a bucket of resin and a bucket of rubber, uh, which we will we'll do that at some point. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to get ourselves a spruce sapling. And we are going to get ourselves, that's really it, I guess. Oh, no, dirt. I'm going to want dirt. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to plant this out here because around the base, uh, my plan is we're going to have spruce because right now, this is a little bit like snowy tundra barren nothingness with like a bunch of random flowers everywhere. <laughs> uh, but I would like to have a spruce forest around um, the structure. I mean, not super dense, but, you know, some spruce trees around here. And actually one of these, we're going to have it setting, say, right in here would be good. Let's go, oops. Let's go ahead and pull up the snow there, put that down, and get ourselves a spruce sapling. And the reason, and another nice thing about going with spruce is it's actually the best output for what we want. Um, you can actually get two different liquids using the arboreal extractor. One is sap, one is resin. And what we want is resin. So all we gotta do is just throw this thing down, and it's gonna start running. You can see it lights up. That means it's working. So you just have to have it at the base of a tree um, and it will work. And the more of them that you have around the base of the tree, it's going to lose efficiency. And we're actually just going to be going with one because we really don't need more than one, to be perfectly honest, especially if we stockpile this and we keep it chunk loaded, especially with it being on a server. Um, you can see it produced 100 millibuckets of resin and resin if we take a look here, uh, resin is used in the chemical reactor in place of the raw rubber pulp to make uh, rubber. And it's the same as having nine raw rubber pulp, but it's only 100 millibuckets of resin, which is going to it's going to make 100 millibuckets of resin every 25 seconds. Now, if you use like um, there's two other trees and I can never remember which ones it is because I just tend to always go with spruce. There's two other trees that will produce resin um, and I can't remember which of the vanilla trees it is but it does it at half efficiency. So you only get 50 millibuckets per 25 seconds. Now, if I was to put down another arboreal extractor, I think it's like 50 seconds or something per operation. Um, so it increases the time. So if you want maximum efficiency, one arboreal extractor is ideal. So, and then what we're going to do is just pump this out, you know, like out the bottom, let's say, and then pump it into there. That's the nice thing about having all these extra advanced mechanical pipes. Um, which actually, I guess, I've got a whole lot of conduit binder made up because I was making more item conduits. And realistically, I could just go with fluid conduits, which is glass and sand. I might do that. I might use fluid conduits instead of 
mechanical pipes because mechanical pipes are a little bit more expensive um, and they're also they also cause more lag to be fair than Ender IO conduits do even though Ender IO conduits are high on the uh, lag producing list of item transfer and fluid transfer but not as bad as mechanism so what I'm probably gonna do is use fluid conduits because they're not very fast but they're plenty fast to keep up with our arboreal extractor so but we'll be able to make a bucket's worth of rubber every 25 seconds and we're gonna put it into a tank we're gonna have resin and rubber stockpiled in tanks so I'm probably not going to worry about adding more arboreal extractors to be honest I mean I know that we're gonna use resin uh, for making amber as well but I don't know if we're gonna use that much of it you know so for now we're just gonna stick with one arboreal extractor but anyways I'll get those uh, I'll get those cables ran up um, with those conduits ran up between episodes because our arboreal extractor is right there and it's just gonna basically come up um, and plug into a tank that's gonna be setting over here and then the tanks gonna plug over um, to the basic chemical reactor so or actually what I'll probably do between episodes is um, I might actually craft up two more of these for some stuff that we're gonna do because they're so cheap and I think I've got plenty of aquamarine illumination powder is just like that I actually think we have a bunch of that made up and then liquid starlight which is cheap um, aquamarine we have 55 so I think we're good on that so uh, yeah I'll probably craft up a couple of those then and we'll put those to use because those things are gonna be nice we're gonna be making tons of those things as time goes on so so I'll, I'll get that stuff ran up and some tanks set up in this room right here we're actually gonna have a lot of fluid storage in this area and a lot of fluid storage over in that area and then of course we'll have our ore processing area we'll have some uh, ore and gem storage and we'll have an automation workshop room in here and then we might have some manual use machines like maybe on this wall we'll see because um, this will be the main room where we do all of our work right so and once this is all done we really won't have to run over to these because we can come over here um, and have our memory chest available which actually our memory chest will probably feed certain things into the modular storage which we'll get into that and that way we can pretty much come over here and craft most everything that we're actively crafting um, with just the click of a button and it's not going to be a whole lot of <laughs> a whole lot of running around like a madman to make things and that's kind of the plan the room where we have our storage set up now is actually just going to be item storage for you know stuff that we aren't actively using constantly which will eventually plug into the IE system and the same for that room that room and that room these will be like storage area type rooms um, down through here so we're steadily getting everything moved to where it needs to go so <laughs> Uh, but yeah so I'm gonna end out this episode here I know it's not quite an hour-long episode I know you guys tend to like the hour-long episodes but next I don't want to start the Steve's factory manager stuff this episode and have to stop it so but I will say I've set all this stuff up in a test world and tested it so um, and it all works very, very nicely and I'm very very happy with it so we'll get into that next episode and um, most of the episode will be looking at this screen I'll go ahead and tell you so I'll be prepared uh, I know it's not for everybody, but hopefully it answers any questions and helps you guys if you want to play more with Super Factory Manager. So, um, But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and I hope you're looking forward to next episode. It's, it's going to be some exciting stuff, I promise. So um, anyways, if you guys enjoyed it, be sure and hit that like button, and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay up to date with when new videos come out, and I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care. Stay safe. I'll see you guys then.